All right. Hi, guys. Um, we are in our second video for informational writing. Last week, you watched a video about what informational writing is, um, what it entails, what you are providing for your audience, and things of that nature. Today, we're going to talk about the next step for your informative piece. Um, taking notes about a particular topic. Now, sometimes you have the ability to choose your topic. Um, sometimes you do not. It just kind of depends on the assignment or your teacher. Um, so we're going to talk about what, what you need to look for when you are taking notes. When you, for fifth graders that are taking the um, state test, um, you'll have your writing piece. You will be given two articles about the same topic. Um, they're going to be different articles. Probably, I, I'm not sure what the topic will be, but you'll have to use those articles to write your own informative piece using information from that. So we're going to talk about how to do that. All right, so here we have um, a text. This is called The World's Weirdest Animals, and this is just a brief um, brief little passage about weird animals. So what I want you to do is I want you to read this. So you can pause the video and then read this and then we will continue on. So go ahead and pause this video. And when you're done, you'll just continue, hit play. All right, so hopefully you've had a chance to read this passage about these weird and interesting animals. So you're given a text and then with that text, you are going to put this information in your own words. So some of the things I thought about when I was reading the text, um, so you can think of questions. You might have questions um, as you read that kind of lead you to re do some more research. You might write down a connection. Hey, I read about this in a different book, or these are similar to this kind of animal. Um, so those are different things that you can write down when you are writing notes. Um, so some of the ideas I wrote down, I wonder why the ugly animal preservation, what the ugly animal preservation society does are many ugly animals endangered species. So those are some of the things I was thinking about. Cephalopods is a domain specific um, vocabulary word I can use in my own writing. So that was more of a statement. So um, I know I can should probably use that um, that writing or that vocabulary word when I'm writing my informative piece. I know that there are many animals that live in underground colonies, mole rats, ants, prairie dogs, shrews, and worms. So I'm making a connection to some of the other animals in the text. Um, maybe I can write my article about the connections between animal bodies and the way that they've adapted to their ha habitats. And I also wrote, I've never seen a blobfish. I want to look up videos of them. So I kind of wrote down these different thoughts that I had as I was reading it. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to read this text slow, slower, slowest. And as you're reading, I want you to write down um, some ideas that you have after reading this. Um, I will want, I do want to see those ideas. So write them down on paper or in an email or even in a Word document. And at the end of this assignment, you can share that with me. So go ahead and pause the video. You're going to read this to yourself, and then as you're reading, make sure you take those notes. Okay, guys, so hopefully you have read this, and hopefully you came up with some really great thoughts and ideas as you read um, this text. And I can't wait to see some of the things that you guys um, thought of as you read this. Um, so now, as I said, you um, are going to use the previous slide to write down your notes and your own words, and hopefully you did that as you were reading. So again, make connections, ask questions, write down facts in your own words. All right, so um, it's also important that we use a variety of resources when we think about a specific topic. So um, as I mentioned, when you take your state test for fifth graders, you're going to be given at least two different resources. So why do we need to do that, right? Why? What? Why? I don't get that. Can't I just read one text and then just be done with it? So um, I am going to read this aloud to you, and you can follow along, or if you would rather not, you can pause it and read it on your own and then skip over my reading. It's up to you. 
So why do informational writers use a variety of resources? Once upon a time in a small village lived five blind men. One day an elephant wandered into the village and the blind men were curious. They had never been able to see an elephant before. I know we don't, we won't be able to look at it, said one man, but why not go out anyway? We can touch the elephant and that will help us to understand what it is like. The other blind men quickly agreed and set out to find the elephant. They all went to where the elephant was and started to feel the giant animal. The first man touched the tail and declared, an elephant is like a broom. It is a long, thick stick with a straw, a soft straw-like end. No way, exclaimed the second man, who was touching the elephant's leg. An elephant is tall and wide like a pillar. Oh, no, an elephant is wide, but it is not round like a pillar. It is a solid wall right in front of me, said the third man, who was touching the broad side of the animal's be elephant's belly. The fourth man touching its ear said, an elephant is definitely not like a wall. It is a big paper fan, thin and wide and fluttering in the wind. The final blind man was very confused as he touched the elephant's long trunk and he said, I only feel something like a tube or hose. I cannot understand how anybody would think an elephant is like is a broom or a pillar or a wall or a fan. What is the problem? asked a wise man who happened to be passing by. He saw the puzzled looks, looks on the faces of the men and wanted to help. Since we cannot see the elephant, explained one blind man, we decided to touch it to understand what it was like. However, we cannot agree because it all, we all seem to be feeling something different. I understand, said the wise man with the kindness in his voice. Actually, all of you are correct. Each one of you is touching a different part of the elephant and gaining a different perspective on this large animal. The elephant has all of the individual features that you described, but to fully understand an elephant, you need to experience all of its features. So hopefully this piece is going to help you um, kind of understand why we use a different or variety of resources. So what I want you to do is now you're going to use that writing to answer these questions. So wherever you took your notes, uh, maybe it was on paper or in an email or a Word document, I want you to go ahead and answer these questions on that same document. So the first question is, in what ways were the blind men correct in their observations about the elephant? In what ways were the blind men wrong in their observations about the elephant? How does the elephant parable relate to our research and informational writing? So make that connection. And what strategies can you use to make, make sure you're getting the whole picture of your topic? So go ahead and pause this video while you answer those questions. All right, so hopefully you've answered those questions and then you will be sending those to me. So let's continue on with um, using topics. Okay, so it is very important to use um, a variety of resources because we wanna make sure we're getting a well-rounded um, picture of our topic. Um, one piece might have other information that another piece might not have. And it kind of depends on which each resource is, what kind of information they're trying to provide. So um, definitely use at least three tr different trusted resources in your research. Um, when you're doing research, you want to avoid um, articles that are opinions, right? Because that's what somebody believes. We want more of facts, okay? So, um, and it is okay to get information from a variety of different authors, a variety of points of views. You might want to get um, information from different geographic region, regions. So if you're talking about um, snakes, you might want to get some information about snakes um, in Asia compared to snakes in South America. I mean, they might be different, so it just kind of depends. And use a variety of different media formats, articles, videos, podcasts, magazines, um, books. These are all examples of different media. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to practice take using your note-taking skills using this article below. Um, again, you're going to add this to the um, assignment that you've already started. 
So right here is just a vocabulary word that you might want to know as before you read. And then you have this article about noisy creatures. So you're going to read this. You're going to take some notes and continue writing your answers on the previous, for the previous answers. Um, continue putting it on that. So pause the video and complete that. All right, so now what you are going to do is you're going to choose a topic. Remember, this is nonfiction, okay? Um, and then I have a format that you're going to follow um, to take notes on your topic. So it might be um, a career. It might be a place. You could choose an animal. Um, it could be um, maybe a food, a type of food. So I want you to think about um, what interests you what you want to do a little bit of research on. So go ahead, you'll choose your topic and you will have to email me the, your information. And this is the format I want you to use. So um, you're obviously I'll have your name because it will be in the email or however you're going to get me your info and the date. You're going to put your topic. So let's say you choose um, the state of Oklahoma, for example. Okay, you will have to do use two sources. So uh, you might use a website, and then the other one might be um, a podcast. So you need to tell me what two sources you're using. Um, if you use a website, go ahead and include the link to the website. And if you use a book or anything else, list the title and the author. Um, that, that way I just know where you're getting in, your information from. You're going to include the main idea from both of those sources. And then I want you to also include three facts that you got from that source as well. So you'll need to email this um, to me, okay? All right, so that is the end of our lesson today. We're just practicing taking notes. Remember, it's very important that you put your notes in your own words. Um, do not copy directly from a book because that is plagiarism. So um, think about how you can word it, how you might say it. Um, that's very important. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. This assignment will be due by Saturday at 10 a.m. So that gives you more than enough time. Make sure you watch the entire video and re-watch it if you have to. And I will get, make sure you email me everything that I've asked for in the video. Just put it all in one email or one Google Doc, what, however you want to share your info with me. All right, let me know if you have any questions, and I hope you guys have a great day.